Hey guys, I'm just Jershin and welcome back to the semi-finale of Season 3 of Pokemarch Madness. Uh, apologies for the bad audio on the last couple of episodes. I had a very fun Windows update, which, always forget, rule number one, you get a Windows update, check your audio settings, they probably got fricked. Although this time it did the opposite of what it usually does to... Pull back the curtain a little bit, a little inside baseball. Usually I keep this mic sensitivity around a, a nice 75 to 80% out of 100. I find that that works pretty well. And usually when I get a Windows update, it defaults it back to 100. And the next time I record a video or stream or join a Discord chat, I'm blowing out eardrums left and right. This time it did the opposite. And instead of cranking it from 75 to 100, it cranked it from 75 to to 22, random number, don't know why it went there, but audio was crazy quiet for the last couple and I had to artificially boost it, which always sounds gross, so I'm sorry. Thankfully, second to last episode, we're back on track. It is the second to last bracket, we have one more coming up that'll go live probably on the 31st, I think we'll finish March strong. This month has 31 days, right? Please, please? Oh baby, it's got 31. We'll put that one live on the 31st as a, a lovely end of March, welcome to April finale. You won't want to miss that one. Today we are doing a bracket that I've teased for a while, but have refused to do. Mostly because it's so big. Yeah, bada bing, bada boom, it's Pokemon Elite Four members. The Elite Four members of every single region. All eight generations, some of them, you know, you have Black 2, White 2, so sometimes the same generation actually has extra Elite Four members. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, regular Sun and Moon, they swap them out. It's a big list, there's a lot in here. And much like I've been trying to do over the course of season three of Pokemon March Madness, I want to be objective here. Now, I will just let you know, it's sad that it took me to the second to last episode to realize this, but I can cheat. I edit these videos. I be cutting out so many uhs and ums and weird awkward pauses and bad jokes that don't land. I'll probably cut out Banjo if he starts <laughs> with his toys you just heard. I'll probably cut that out. There's so many trainers in this that I sat down and I was like, all right, time to memorize all of the teams so that I can accurately judge these people based on their teams because they're the Elite Four, so they should be difficult. I just realized I got a second monitor right here. Why can't I just cheat and look up the teams and then cut that part out and then just get into the debating. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's like a, it's like when the professor lets you bring in the note card into the test. I don't know why I was cramming so hard for these. I could have cheated the whole time. I waited until the second to last episode to do so though, but that will make things a lot easier today. So Elite Four members, they are supposed to be some of the hardest trainers that you face. They're the final, if you don't count the champion, the final four to test your strength before you can face the champion. So my rule number one, my most important metric, they should be pretty tough. Now, I know that when we, we did the champions bracket, I said that I didn't like monotyped champions. Elite four members get a pass because pretty much all of these guys, the, their whole shtick is much like the gym leaders, they specialize in a single type. So I'm not going to hold that against them because except for, where's my man, Flint, Look, we're gonna cheat. Normally we start on the left side. Flint, you lose. Flint's gonna lose right off the bat. He's the worst Elite Four member. It's not even his fault. It's completely Gen 4's fault for <laughs> only putting two fire types in the game. My man Flint is a fire type trainer and has two fire type Pokemon. The starter, he's got an Infernape and a Rapidash. Then beyond that, he's got Drift, Blimp, Steelix, Lopunny. That's like the only one I remember because it's so abysmal. So he's gonna lose. However, even though they only specialize in a single type, you can have variety. You can have secondary typings, you can have nice coverage. So we'll be looking at their teams and we'll see how well covered is your team. Do you have a lot of duplicates? A lot of Gen 1, 2, and 3 Elite Four trainers are gonna fall into that camp because there just weren't enough Pokemon at the time. I think that's gonna dock them a few points. Rule number one, they should be tough battles. They're some of the best trainers in the region. They better be tough. Rule number two, and this is a little more subjective, but aesthetically, I like it when the Elite Four matches their typing. For example, you look at, who's a great example? I mean, Drasna, both in name and in general look. You can look at her and go, she specializes in dragon types. Absolutely no doubt about it. That's a dragon type trainer. You look at someone like Phoebe and you say, Ooh but then after you say, Ooh you go, I don't know what type you use. You have flowers on your, maybe grass, eh, ghost type. Uh, I'll be judging them based on their aesthetics, both uh, do they have a cool character design? That's important to me. And also does your aesthetic match your 
general team composition because I think you get bonus points for that. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. Lance gets a buy. Next we have Malva who is the fire type expert from Gen 6 and Marshall the fighting type master from Gen 5. Now, before I look up these teams, I will say, I know that some of these trainers have multiple team comps. They have different team comps based on if you fight them the first time versus some of the games have rematches. Some of the games have like sequels where Bruno appears in both red and blue, but also gold and silver elite four. I'm just going to go based on like the base team. I'm going to go first time through. What team do you bring? That's my first impression of you. First impressions are important. That's what I'm going to judge these guys based off of. Now, Malva's team, look, Gen 6, as much as I love the designs of some of the, I really like the overall aesthetics of the Gen 5, Gen 6, sorry, Elite 4 members. The fact that the, I, why didn't we give them four Pokemon, man? These are supposed to be some of the hardest battles in the game, and they get four Pokemon. It's really sad. I love, I like Gen 6. I like X and Y. I understand that people complain about them being too easy. This is an aspect where I can 100% get on board. The Elite Four should not have four Pokemon. That's abysmal. Now, Malva's four Pokemon are pretty cool. She has a Pyroar, Fire Normal. Torkoal, Pure Fire, Chandelure, Fire Ghost, and Talon Flame, Fire Flying. To only get four Fire-type Pokemon, you picked four pretty darn good ones. I'm not the hugest Torkoal fan. Something about Ash using him in the anime does make me like him a little bit more, but I, I've never used one personally. And then we have Marshall, the Fighting-type Specialist, who I know off the top of my head has Sock and Throw. Really, in the initial fight with, I just, I did not realize this, in the initial fight, they also only have four Pokemon. What are we doing here? Now, when you rematch, they get a full team of six, but I'm gonna stick by my rules. You get four Pokemon. Marshall's four Pokemon are Sock, Throw, Mien Chow, Conkeldur. Those are all pure mono fighting types. And while I do remember Marshall kind of bodying me, I think his Sock, if I remember correctly, had Sturdy, and it also had Stone Edge. So I remember facing it with Braviary or whatever flying type I happened to be using at the time. He always lives one hit, and if he gets off the Stone Edge, bye-bye, you're totally toast. He gets some points for that. Aesthetics, he definitely stri he's very easily, you look at him, it's clearly, and the, the arena in the Gen 5 ones, when you go up the big escalators to get up to them, his is like a fighting dojo type arena. It's pretty cool. He fits the aesthetic very well. I think his team's a little lame. I like that Malva is a member of Team Flare secretly, though not secretly, all, all it's very obvious, and her fire types kind of give it away. I'm gonna give this one to Malva. Next we have Lucian and Olivia, and I'm going to push down all of the simpery in my body body for a couple of seconds to not make a snap judgment because there is one of these two that instantly my brain and or heart and or other part of the human body is saying should advance to the next round but we will be objective kind of uh first we have lucian lucian is the fourth member of the gen 4 elite 4 he is a psychic type master in your initial battle with lucian he has a Mr. Mime, a Girafferig, Bronzong, a Metacham, and an Alakazam. That's pretty stacked. Now, Fairy type didn't exist back in Gen 4, so technically Mr. Mime is just Psychic. Then you've got a Psychic Normal, a Psychic Fighting, a Psychic Steel, and it's a pure Psychic, but Alakazam is one of the most powerful Pokemon ever created. And on the rematch, or is it in Platinum? In Platinum, he actually swaps out the Metacham for the Gallade, and he swaps out the Girafferig for an Espeon. I love Platinum. We're going, I gotta stay objective here. We're staying with, we're staying with the Gen 4 team. We're staying with the original Diamond and Pearl team. Olivia, on the other hand, obviously rock type trainer. You initially meet her as one of the island kahunas on the second island, I believe. It's been a while since I played Sun and Moon. You get to meet her throughout the island and then she's the final test on the second island. And then you rematch her again when she gets chosen for the Elite Four. Her team, on the other hand, is Relicanth who's a little lame, Probopass, who's very beefy, Alolan Golem, that's kind of fun to say, and very cool, Lycanroc, Nightform, and Carbink. Carbink is a weird choice. <laughs> Carbink is a strange, strange choice. It's fairy type, so that's cool that it's got the dual typing there. It's a strange choice for a rock type, though. Olivia looks like more of a rock type trainer than Lucian looks like a psychic type trainer. He's got the cool hair flow and things of that nature, but nothing about him really screams. Whereas Olivia's got like, she's very into the jewelry. I think she owns a jewelry shop. She's got the gemstones and, and rocks kind of strewn throughout her attire. 
And also she is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. So I'm going to give it to Olivia here. Congratulations. I think their teams, I think Lucian's team is probably a little bit stronger. The aesthetics of Olivia may be pushing her slightly ahead further than she should, but that's okay. Next we have Hala versus Phoebe. Hala, fighting type Gen 7. Phoebe, Ghost Gen 3. Hala's team, again, much like Olivia, face him as a kahuna, face him again later. I think it's kind of cool that they chose the kahunas to re also represent the Alola region in the Elite Four, but it's also a little lazy. Like we didn't get to see new characters. They were just like, here's the same battle, but with slightly better Pokemon, which is true in this case. His Makuhita has evolved into a Hariyama. His Crabrawler has evolved into the, what is your name even, a Bama Crab? Crabominable, sorry. I tried to forget that that Pokemon exists, it's so ugly. He also has a Primeape, a Beware, and a Poliwrath. I love Poliwrath so much. That's a pretty sick team, and I actually like Hala quite a bit. I know Hala was included in our trial captains of last season for the Gen 7 uh, best trial captain in Kahuna. Did he win the whole thing? I really like Hala. I think the aesthetic's really good. He's got the big fighting type fittingly. He's got the big sumo wrestler kind of vibe. The little kimo open kimono. I think he's got shorts on. I can't really see it. He's got like a sash tied around his waist, if I remember correctly. Phoebe, on the other hand, ghost type. As I said, her design doesn't really scream ghost type. And she's gonna suffer. This is a shame, because I think Phoebe is like adorable and is one of a, a great designed trainer but not a great designed ghost trainer and her team because in gen 3 there were like six lines of ghost types you had the gengar line the mischievous line the dustclops line the Bennett line and sableye that's only five is there one more there might be one more i can't remember she didn't have much to choose from and in her case she stuck to just the gen 3 mons she has, a, she has two Dusclops, two Bennett, and one Sableye. And as much as I love Sableye, and that Dark Ghost typing is pretty tough to beat, I can't in good faith give this to her because her team has so many repeats that it's kind of lame. And I kind of remember just bodying her with my level 70 Blaze again. You know, Gen 3, you're, that's going to be a common theme. I bodied everybody in Gen 3 with my level 70 Blaziken because most of them were weak to either fire or fighting. Next we have Karen. Karen is Gen 2 Dark type, I believe. And Wickstrom. Wickstrom feels like he should have been in Sword and Shield, but instead he was in Gen 6 and he is a Steel type expert. Karen's team. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Karen's team includes Umbreon, Murkrow, which is a little bit of a shame because Honchkrow didn't exist at the time, but the idea is there. Gengar, who isn't actually a Dark type. Houndoom, who is awesome, and Vileplume, who also is not a dark type. She suffers a little bit as well from their, this was Gen 2, and they introduced two or three dark types. It'd be cool if she had a T-Tar. I feel like they should have given her a T-Tar. They didn't. They gave her a Vileplume instead, and a Gengar, which is very scary, but not a dark type. I, I will hold that against her slightly. She doesn't necessarily scream ghost type trainer either when looking at her, but I can't deny that I do enjoy looking at her. Wickstrom on the other hand, the dude's in a suit of armor. He's very clearly a steel type trainer. He's got a Scizor, an Aegislash, a Proopaz, and a Clefki. Clefki, not my favorite Pokemon, that's for sure. I do like his suit of armor. Once again, Gen 6 only including four Pokemon on the teams. That's gonna hurt you a little bit. And in fact, maybe for nostalgia slash simpery slash nostalgia alone, I'm gonna give this one to Karen, who Granted, even though she has five Pokemon, has less dark type Pokemon than you have steel type, but she has cooler Pokemon. Bertha versus Drake. This is kind of a, kind of a bout. This is kind of a, a stacked lineup here, I gotta say. Bertha is from Gen 5. She is a ground type trainer. I, I really like her look quite a bit. She reminded me of Agatha, so I was a little surprised when she turned out to be a ground type expert instead of a, instead of a ghost type expert. Her team was still very good nonetheless. Quagsire, Sudowoodo, who is pure rock, not ground, Hippowdon, Golem, and Whiskash. If her team suffers anything, and I think it's the plight of most ground types, it is that if you have a single grass type Pokemon, that team is basically toast. <laughs> She's got four quad weaknesses to grass on her team. And I remember in my first playthrough, I went through with an Obama Snow, so I had my pickings, uh, ice type or Grass-type to completely devastate her entire team. That's a little unfortunate for her. 
Drake, on the other hand, is the Gen 3 dragon type master. I love his aesthetic. Of all of the dragon masters, quote unquote, he might be my second favorite aesthetic next to Drake. Sorry, next to Drayden with the weird mouth beard from Gen 5. I like his grumpy old sea captain aesthetic quite a bit. He's got a Shelgen, Altaria, two Flygon, best dragon ground type Pokemon, don't at me, Garchomp lovers get out of here, and a Salamence. Of the Gen 3 fights, which I mentioned I used Blaziken and mostly swept through them, this was the toughest battle for me because I actually had to, I couldn't beat it my first time as a kid. I had to go catch like a level 50 Tentacruel and teach an Ice Beam just to get past the Flygons and the Salamences because my Blaziken could not do it alone. For that and that alone, even though you doubled up on the Flygon, I'm still going to give you some credit. I like Drake quite a bit. Next we have Chantal and Moilane. Chantal is from Gen 5, Ghost Type Expert. She's a writer and she's got the book. Ghost Rider. I don't know if that's the connection that they wanted to put there. She's a Ghost Rider. If that if that is, that's a great connection. And we've got Molaine, the Steel Type Expert from Gen Seven. Chantal comes out rocking a Jellicent, Kofagrigas, Golurk, and Chandelure. I'm gonna try to not let my personal opinions about different types sway my judgment too much because I love ghost types and I love every single member of that team quite a bit. I'm gonna try not to let that cloud my judgment. I do like steel types as well. Molain, what you got? He has a clef key again. I almost can't let you pass just because you use a clef key. Abyss Sharp, one of my favorites. Magnazone, one of my favorites. Alolan Doug Trio, which I feel like he just had to because it was Gen 7. And a Metagross. I do love the steel type as well. That's a pretty stacked team. Looking at that right there, I, I'm gonna have to give it to Molane. Congrats, Lorelai, you get a buy. Agatha as well. Next, we have Glacia and Aaron. I don't even have to look at the teams here. It's gonna be Aaron. Um, not solely because he has a Yan Mega, which is one of my favorite Pokemon, but because Glacia is a little bit of a pushover. She, oh my goodness, Gen 3. Pokemarch Madness Season 3 has basically existed for me to just take a number two all over Gen 3. Gen 3's Elite Four is just disgusting and so much Control C, Control V. They copy pay everybody except for Sydney has doubles. Phoebe has two Dusclops, two Manettes. Drake has two Flygons. Glacia has two Glalie, two Celio, and a Walrein. Three from the same line. <laughs> We gotta get some variety in here, man. I know that they tried to stick with just Gen 3 Pokemon, but like even if you gotta pull for some from some previous generations, we gotta get some variety up in here, dude. That's just a gross team that I don't like looking at. Aaron, on the other hand, dude, he may be bug type. I know bug type gets dunked on quite a bit. I gotta give Aaron some credit. There's like two fire types in all of Gen 4. He picked a good generation to specialize in the bug type, and his team is pretty sick. Well, Dust Tox is not that exciting, so we will pretend that that one doesn't exist. He's got a Dust Tox, a Vespaquen, a Heracross, a Beautifly, and a Drapion. Now, Drapion doesn't technically count. Oh, he doesn't have a Yon. Oh, he gets the Yon Mega and Platinum. See, I just, I played through Platinum so much more than I played through Diamond and Pearl. Most of the teams that I remember are from that. Even I'm looking at Bertha now, and she at least had a Gliscor in Platinum, which is way more interesting than her original team. And Flint actually gets five fire types. He gets a Flary on a Houndoom and a, and a Magmortar. Dude, Platinum fixed so many things. Great sequel, but mostly just makes Diamond and Pearl look bad. But I, I gotta stick to my rule, which is that I'm only looking at the gen, the original team that they bring forth. And he does not have a Yon Mega. He's still gonna be Glacia because at least he's got some different Pokemon. That's gonna hurt him down the road though. Next we have Caitlyn and Seabold. Psychic type from gen six? No, from gen five. And water, water type? from Gen 6, I believe. Caitlyn comes in with a Musharnam, who I'm not a huge fan of. Reuniclus, who I love. Gothitelle, who I love. And Sigilith, who I also love. And Seabold. Oh man, what a team. Holy cow. I'm sorry, Caitlyn. Seabold comes in with Clodser, who is one of my favorite water types. Gyarados, OG. Starmie, OG as well. 
and Barbarical, who's just okay. He's got like the sailor vibe. He looks kind of like, I wonder if Quaxley, the new starter from Gen 9, is going to evolve into something that looks like this guy. Caitlyn is just kind of sleepy. I do like her big hair, but I'm going to have to give it to Seabold here. This is a battle of two trainers with only four Pokemon, and I think Seabold's four Pokemon are a little bit more exciting. Next, we have Acerola versus Will. Acerola Ghost type, Will is Psychic type? from Gen 2, I wanna say. Acerola comes in with Sableye, the anchor Pokemon whose name I can never remember, Delmise, Frostlass, Palisanth, and Driftblim. Again, I'm gonna try to not be a simp for the ghost type, but I really like ghost type Pokemon. Will, on the other hand, I like psychic types too. Zatu, Jinx, two Zatu, Jinx, Executor Slowbro. It's gonna be Acerola, I'm sorry. I actually like Will's like Robin Hood, not Robin Hood, like Robin Batman sidekick. The whole like, almost like a jester kind of get up. I think it's really cool, but Acerola kind of joins you along your entire journey. So to get to see her in the end, become an Elite Four member, it's a nice development for her character. Whereas Will just kind of shows up. Bruno versus Drazna. This is actually very tough. So we've got Gen 1 fighting type, even though he's got like three Onyxes. <laughs> he's got two Onyx, Hitmonchan, Hitmonlee, Machamp again. I mean, they could have given him a Primeape and they could have given him Polyrath, so they actually could have given him five fighting types. I don't know why he has two Onyxes, but typically he's, he's mostly known for his fighting types. And if you've seen the man with his shirt off, I've never seen him with his shirt on. He certainly fits the bill of a fighting type master, and I, I really like him. He's one of the OGs. I can't deny that Drazna's design is clean, though. She's Gen 6, Dragon type master. She has a Dragalge, a Drudigan, a Noivern, and an Altaria. She's only got four Pokemon. There's some, I, I really like Drosna's design. I think it's, I think it's really, really well done. The like dragon tooth jewelry on her like wristbands and necklaces. And I, are those, I don't know if those are earrings coming out or what it is. She looks like she tames dragons. They nailed that design. Bruno, good design as well. Kind of basic. Sydney versus Flint. We may as well go over their teams, even though I've already decided. I already told you Flint's team. He's got two fire type Pokemon. Sydney at least has five different dark types. Mightyena, Absol, Charpedo, Shiftree, Cacturn. Now, did I destroy all of those dark type Pokemon with my Blaziken? Yeah, a little sky uppercut will do it. Basically sent them all to the Shadow Realm, so he's very easy, but I'll at least give him credit. Of all of the Gen 3 Elite Four members, he at least has a little variety on his team. Next, we have Grimsley and Kahili. Grimsley is like kind of like a like a fan following, doesn't he? He's Gen 5 Dark type. He has four Pokemon. He has Liopard, Bisharp, Crocodile, and Scrafty. I love pretty much all of those Pokemon except for Liopard. That's a great team. It is only four Pokemon. He also shows up again in Gen 7, which is kind of a cool cameo. But unfortunately, I think it's a testament to him being, even though his design's pretty cool and definitely screams dark type. It's got some Edgar Allan Poe vibes. I think it definitely hurts him that I didn't recognize him when he showed back up in Gen 7. I was like, oh, this is a character. I wonder uh, who this is. And they're like, oh, don't you remember? This is Grimsley. And I was like, sorry. Kahili, on the other hand, she really has no storyline whatsoever. She really just shows up. She's like, oh, by the way, you have not met me a single time and I'm in the Elite Four now. However, her aesthetic is baller. She's a golfer. I love the the two cannon colored golf grip on her golf club that fits really well. She is a flying type expert. She has Skarmory, Mandibuzz, Toucanon, Crobat, and the fire type Oracorio, and she is pretty, so I am going to give this one to Kaili over Grimsley. Very sorry, and Koga gets a bye. All right, so one time through, there are a couple trainers in here who we didn't see their teams. I will, I'll go through their teams when we get to it, but from this point forward, to make sure this isn't an hour long video, we're gonna kinda get it. We have Lance the Dragon Master. Lance is gonna suffer a little bit because of the dreaded duplicate. In his first battle in Gen 1, he has an Aerodactyl, a Gyarados, two Dragonair, and a Dragonite. He also, much like Glacia, has three Pokemon from the same line. However, there was only one Dragon type at the time. So can I really hold that against him? And the Dragon type is pretty dope. So at least, as he's got the variety, but mm, it's, it's kind of a, 
non-exciting team. It's a tough battle though. And I think I do have to factor in the toughness of the battle. Malva, while I think her team is really cool and I really like her aesthetic, I'm gonna have to give this one to Lance. He, he's the tougher battle. The dragon type, especially in Gen 1, was pretty tough to overcome. Olivia versus Hala, this is just mean. I love both of these characters a lot. Their aesthetics fit very well. Sun and Moon, if it excelled at one thing, it's character design. I hate to do this to her, but I think Hala has a cooler team, all things considered, of the fighting type Pokemon that he, he rocks. I like his team a little bit more, and I remember it being a little bit of a tougher battle. So I'm gonna give it to him over Olivia. Next, we have Karen versus Drake. Both have some. Karen's got Pokemon that aren't necessarily Dark type. Drake's got some duplicates. I'm a simp for the Dragon type, man. I ca I can't stop it. I'm a I'm a huge simp for the Dragon type, so I'm gonna give this one to Drake. Next we have Mulane versus Lorelai. Lorelai is the very first Elite Four member, the OG, and she comes packing some heat. Dugong, Cloyster, Jinx. Lapras and Slowbro. Slowbro is the only one of those that isn't an ice type. The rest of those, on the other hand, I know there's a lot of water ice. That's kind of all Gen 1 had in the ice department. I guess you had Jinx who is ice psychic, but most of the other ice types were also packing the water type. That hurts her a little bit from an overall team diversity perspective. And Malane does have a Metagross, but I'm gonna have to give it to Lorelai. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe neither of their aesthetics really scream their type, but I gotta give Lorelai some credit for being, I, I remember as a kid going into the Elite Four and instantly realizing that I was not ready for these four battles because she absolutely bodied me. Agatha versus Eren, look, Eren would stand a better chance if he had his Yanmega. I'm not counting the Platinum team though, we're counting the Diamond and Pearl, it's gonna go to Agatha. She's strikes fear into my heart. The, the music that plays in the Agatha room, I still, I have like a deep seated memory of playing Pokemon Red as a kid in my backyard on the swing set, swinging back and forth on my Game Boy Color and just fighting this lady over and over and over again because the ghost type was broken <laughs> in Gen 1. There was only one ghost type, which does hurt her quite a bit. I also had no friends, so I couldn't trade for an Alakazam, and there was no dark type. So beating this lady was pretty tough. She has two Gengar, a Haunter, an Arbok, and a Golbat. Now, again, there's only one ghost type in the entire generation, so that kind of stings for her, but I've got some really nice memories of Agatha, so I'm gonna give it to her. Also, I love the ghost type. Seabold versus Acerola. I love Seabold's team, but it's going to Acerola here. This may as well be who's the best ghost type trainer in the entire <laughs> Pokemon universe. And Dragon. Ghost and Dragon are two of my favorite types. Ghost, Dragon, Dark, Steel are probably like my, maybe Fire. That might round out my top five. I'm gonna give it to Drozna here. Love the dragon type, love her team comp. Sydney, kind of a pushover, even though he's got some good variety. And now we have Koga versus Kahili. Koga first shows up in Gen. He gets elevated from gym leader to elite four member in Gen 2, which was kind of cool to see him get that promotion. He's got a Muck, a Venomoth, an Ariados, a Crobat, and a Foratress. That's a pretty stacked team. He's a tough fight. The Toxic is really annoying <laughs> to have to constantly deal with. Poison Powders, Toxic, Sleep Powders, Paralyzed pow They're all really annoying to deal with. His design is so clean, man. He's a, he's a poison type using Ninja that uses Subterfuge to defeat his enemies. It's perfect. There was like a small molecule of Simpery in my body that was like, choose the cool golfer, lady. Choose the cool golfer. I held out. I held out at the last second. I'm gonna give it to Koga here. All right, we've seen everybody's teams. Let's crank through the rest of it. Lance the Dragon Master, Hala the Fighting Type User. It's Hala. Why do I like Hala so much? I don't know. I can't tell you. There's something about the nice grandpa paternal figure meeting you in the first town of the game and then closing out your journey at the end of the game with a final fight that's pretty awesome. I'm gonna give it to him. Hala versus... Sorry, Drake versus Lorelei. Drake's aesthetic, Drake's, a oops, sorry, Karen. Sorry, Karen, no, you've been defeated. <laughs> Drake's aesthetic matches his design a little bit more. He is like the only tough part of the Gen 3 Elite Four. He, he definitely like, he's the anchor 
of the Gen 3 Elite 4. The rest of it is mostly pushovers. Um, and I, again, probably my second favorite Dragon Master aesthetic, so I'm gonna give it to him. Battle of the Ghost type trainers, Agatha versus Acerola. I gotta give it to Acerola just for the variety of ghost type Pokemon on our team. This, is, this bracket's a little unfair based on my metrics. The Gen 1, 2, and 3 Elite 4 members, there just weren't as many Pokemon for them to choose from. So they were kind of screwed out the get-go, but I'm gonna hold it against them. Koga versus Drozna. Dragon type... <sighs> this... I'm gonna be honest with you, this could be my final two. Just based on aesthetics and team comps alone, which are the two metrics that I set out, I like the dragon type way more than I like the poison type, but Koga embodies it so well. The move from gym leader to elite four, pretty much nobody else on this list can really... We've got some people that move from gym leader to champion. Not many others can boast that they went from gym leader to elite four, though. It says a lot about his character. I'm gonna give it to Koga here. I'm sorry, Drasna. It's it's a tough one. Hala versus Drake. Hala versus Drake. Let me quickly look at their team comps again. Shelgon to Flygon, Altaria, Salamence. Gosh, that Salamence is so tough to beat. And I gotta give Drake some credit. Nobody gives my boy Flygon any <laughs> respect. He put two of them on his team. That is the ultimate level of respect. And my boy Hala... Oh, Polyrath, Beware, Primeape, Hariyama abominable i gotta give it to drake i uh, the respect for the flygon is very important to me i i really like that pokemon and nobody seems to give it a, a, the time of day except for my boy drake here and the aesthetic's really good i wish i could grow a dr robotnik mustache like that but i probably never will acerola versus koga this is easier than drasna versus koga is gonna be koga and like I said, I think Drasna versus Koga, I think Drasna versus Koga is probably a stronger final matchup than this. And since Koga won the first time, Koga is going to win a second time. Boom. Congratulations, Koga. I don't remember where he placed in the gym leader bracket from Gen 1. I'll have to go back and watch it. I can't remember if he won or not. I know that Hala, I think, won in Gen 7. So that's a little bit of an upset, but Koga is my overall favorite Elite Four member from any game. There's something really cool in Gen 2, not only when you go to the Elite Four and you realize that the, the two regions are connected, but it really drives it home when you're going into the Elite Four and you walk into Koga's room and you're like, oh my gosh, I remember you. There's something really cool about that connection. It's a little unfair. He gets that he gets that extra layer of lore that no one else besides some of the Gen 7 Elite Four members get. Koga's gonna take it home though. Thank you guys for watching. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. This one, uh, hopefully I can get it out on time. It's gonna take a little bit longer to edit everybody's... Maybe I'll get lazy and I won't put them on the screen. You'll know by this point. To put everybody's teams on the screen. So hopefully I get this out in time. We have one more bracket. March 31st. What day of the week is that? Is that a Thursday? Thursday, March 31st. Come back for the finale of Season 3 of Pokemon March Madness. It'll be a fun one, I promise you. Uh, check out our boys NSL and Yidus. They will both be doing these brackets as well. I think NSL's actually just went live today. And now that I've done mine, I can finally go watch that. And I'll leave a link to this bracket in the description if you would like to do it yourself. You can share it with me on Twitter at JustJershin or in the community Discord. Link in the description below. With that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying Season 3 of Pokemon March Madness. We got one more bracket to go. I'll see you guys next time.